One of the more surprising players that became a free agent this offseason was Landon Collins. The New York Giants could have easily franchise tagged him on a very affordable amount and kept him around for one more season. However, they decided to let him go, and I find that very fascinating. But what's equally fascinating is the Washington Redskins are now trying to take advantage of that situation by now signing Landon Collins. The Redskins are in a bit of a predicament as they are paying Alex Smith a ton of money even though he won't be playing this next season. However, I still kind of like the move for them going after Landon Collins, largely because the Alex Smith money is gone no matter what. They still have to try to make a move, and in my opinion, this is a move that makes a decent amount of sense. While Collins' position is strong safety, he can honestly play just as well as a linebacker can in a lot of plays. Like, take this one for example. What New Orleans is going to do here is they're going to have their left tackle and left guard double team an interior lineman and then they're going to send a tight end and receiver up to block those other two giants on the screen. From there, they'll send their left guard up to block Landon Collins and this makes a lot of sense. This is the play you'll see teams do all the time where they want to have a double team on the line but they also want to continue to have one of those guys move up to block a linebacker or someone in the box and since there is a safety in the box, that's usually the guy they'll go after. And if you see, Andres Pete actually does a very good job of rushing up and he's in great position to try to block Landon Collins out of the way. But Collins they would easily sidestep Pete and still find a way to get into the play and help the Giants make a tackle on this one. It's those types of plays that might not seem like a huge deal at the time, but really can be. I mean this is the difference between 2 yards and 5 or 6 yards because of that play by Collins. While this definitely wasn't going to be a touchdown, it still was a beneficial play for the Giants. He's also a smart player as well. As you see on a play like this, this is actually designed to be a pretty standard run just straight up the middle. But look at what Landon Collins is going to do on this play. If you notice where he is right now, this is actually a great job of understanding your gap assignment. You see a ton of players on situations like this try to break in as quickly as possible to try to get to the halfback, but the problem with that is it leaves the gap that you're in charge of guarding to potentially get open. So you do have to be patient and you can't just run straight in right away, especially when you're a safety like Landon Collins is. You have to play a little bit back. Collins is in position where if McCaffrey runs straight at him, he can still make a tackle. However, he doesn't sell out too far so that if McCaffrey does break to the outside, he can still be in a position to make a tackle towards the outside. And as you see, McCaffrey is actually going to move over at a certain point, but this is no problem for Collins as he's now in position to make a tackle where McCaffrey is, and he ends up tackling McCaffrey for a loss of yards. To me, that play was a great example of Collins being able to find a way to get into the play, even if it wasn't necessarily a play that was designed for him to necessarily get into that play. And this next one will be another good example of showing how he can find a way to get into a play, even if it's not necessarily what he's designed to do on a play like that. As you see right here, what Carolina is going to do is have their right guard and right tackle double team an interior lineman, and then they're going to pull their left tackle over to the bottom half of the screen to block that edge rusher. They're then going to pull their tight end over to essentially lead block as he'll take away another linebacker, and they're going to send a receiver up to block the other linebacker. This now means that the next closest unblocked man will be a Giants member in the secondary. However, Landon Collins isn't that giant. He's actually over there. But if you notice, look at how quickly he realizes what's going on and is able to move over to the bottom half of the screen. I mean, as of right now, he's much closer to the ball than the other giant safety who was also in that area and was looking to stop a potential run. He once again is able to run over and impact this play. Really the key to stopping a run, especially if you're a safety, is understanding your gap assignment. So many times when you see a big run happen, largely it's because of a player and oftentimes it's because of a safety not understanding their gap assignment and getting out of position. And Landon Collins isn't the kind of guy who's going to let that happen very often. This plays a perfect example of him understanding his gap assignment. As you see, Washington is going to have one-on-one -on -one block all across the board, meaning that Landon Collins is going to be unblocked on this play. But it's worth mentioning that his job on this play is to make sure that nobody gets to the bottom half of the screen. He's trying to make a wall right there. It's going to be a run to the top half of the screen, and you'd so often see players try to run to the top half of the screen and basically just try to be in case of an emergency situation. But Collins is a smart player, and he's not going to make that mistake. He knows that if he runs over to the top half of the screen, this could now create a scenario where the halfback can then run to the bottom half of the screen and pick up a ton of yards. Notice how he just creeps in all the way and just stays focused and just keeps being patient. He doesn't break in and he doesn't take any chances here because he's a contained man. That's his job on this play is simply just to make sure the halfback doesn't go to the bottom half of the screen. You know, that's the Patriots way of do your job. Well, Landon Collins did his job here. Two years ago, the Redskins had the worst rushing defense in the league. Last year, they improved pretty well as they moved up to 17th best rush defense in the league, which granted is still very mediocre, but it's much better than it was the year prior. So I do think their thought by adding Landon Collins is to turn that rushing defense into potentially a top 10 rushing defense. But of course, Landon Collins isn't a linebacker. He's not just in charge of stopping the run. He can also stop the pass from time to time. He's very quick. That's really what's key about him. Like on this play, it's a cover one linebacker blitz, meaning that the Bears quarterback who is actually Chase Daniel on this
this play, it's going to have to look to try to throw very quickly. There's going to be a flat route right there, so that's where Daniel is going to actually look to be throwing. It's worth mentioning that a Giants defender actually intercepts this pass. However, even if he didn't, I think this still would have been fine for the Giants, as Landon Collins is clearly breaking in, and he's playing great coverage in this situation. This was already a pick six, but honestly, I think even if that ball gets by that initial Giants defender, Landon Collins could have had a pick six of his own. It was certainly an ill-advised pass, however, it also goes to show that Collins can be effective in the passing game. Here's another good example of him being effective in the passing game. It's a cover one hole, and those are the routes that the Giants will be going up against, and the one route in particular you're going to want to take a look at is that route right there, as it has a cut which is typically a good way to beat man coverage, and it's going to be past that initial zone coverage, which means it could get open towards the end of the route. But one thing you want to take a look at is the Giant who was initially in charge of guarding that middle of the field is going to do a very good job of breaking to the top half of the screen and continuing tight coverage with that receiver. So now basically this means that there's three Giants in the area and only two wide receivers, meaning this is a good situation for the Giants. So what Landon Collins is going to actually do here is basically just play zone coverage in this situation. He's going to be looking at the quarterback and being ready to make a read. Carson Wentz actually is still going to try to throw it to that receiver who he was initially thinking about throwing it to, and Landon Collins sees this and breaks in, and since the throw actually wasn't that great, he's able to get an interception out of it. Again, once again, there's definitely blame to be made on the quarterback here, as the throw from Wentz just wasn't a great throw. However, you have to give credit to Collins for being aware of what was going on, and making an interception on a pass that really, he had no business of even being near, since he was playing man coverage on a completely different receiver. He's a very aware player. That's crucial in any position, but especially in a strong safety position, because there is so much you have to be aware of. And personally, I do think that Washington could definitely use Landon Collins and he could definitely be a huge benefit to their team. If you take a look at this play, Indianapolis is going to have their right guard and right tackle, double team and interior linemen. Then they're going to have their center and left tackle have one-on-one -on -one matchups and then they're going to pull their left guard over to the top half of the screen to block that edge rusher. Because they're going to be having a running play to the top half of the screen, the whole point of this play is just to give themselves better angles because now what they're going to do is send their tight end out to lead block and he'll take away the first linebacker in that area. This now means that the other two guys who could make a play would be the other linebacker in the area and the defensive back who's in the area. At this point, that defensive back is doing a good job of staying where you'd want to be on this play, but the problem is there's a Colts receiver who's going to run up to block him. To me, this just goes to show that you have to be aware and you have to be paying attention to your surroundings as he's not going to get blocked out of the way and ends up not being able to make a tackle. He falls to the ground and gets run over before finally the Redskins are able to make a tackle. Again, it's not a terrible play by any means, but it isn't a good one. I mean, you have to be more aware in this situation and Landon Collins certainly would have been. Having an aware safety could really help the Redskins defense. Like on this play, for example, it's going to be a cover three zone, and those are the routes that they're going to be going up against. And if you take a look at that route right there, and if you notice, there is a small part of that route right there that's going to cut in between the middle linebacker zone and the safety zone. So now there is a receiver slightly open, but it's important to look at what DJ Swearinger is going to do here. Swearinger is no longer on the Redskins. However, when he was, he was able to make pretty decent plays like this one right here. He just notices where the throw is probably going to go to, and ends up breaking in, jumping the route, and getting an interception. It's a smart play, and honestly, it's the type of play I could definitely see a guy like Landon Collins making. Now, of course, it has to be mentioned that they did play different positions. Swearinger was a free safety, whereas Collins is a strong safety, but I do think it's worth mentioning how awareness as a safety can benefit you in this Redskins defense. Here's another good example of that. What you see Dallas is going to do here is have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups on their offensive line, and they're going to pull a tight end over to the bottom half of the screen. This is actually because it's going to be an RPO, and it could be a run to the bottom half of the screen, meaning that one alignment backer does go to the bottom of the screen to try to stop the run, now there'll be a tight end in the area to block him. They'll also then just have the receiver block the defensive back in that area. From here it's pretty simple, Prescott is pretty much just going to simply read what that edge rusher does. Because it will be a fake handoff to the right side of the screen, this now means that if the edge rusher follows him to that side of the screen, then Prescott should just take it himself and move to the bottom half of the screen. Meaning that the key player to watch here is going to be that safety right there. Everything works out perfectly for Dallas with the exception of the fact that a safety makes a great play, is able to crash in and stop Prescott. This play wasn't exactly a total win for the Redskins, however, in a lot of situations, this could turn into an easy touchdown, so I do think it was a good play by that safety there, and it wasn't his fault that the edge rusher didn't stay in his gap assignment and allowed Prescott to get past him to the bottom half of the screen. Really, in the run game, gap assignment is everything. Take a look at this play for a perfect example. It's going to be a run to the top half of the screen, and take a look at that defensive back who's in the box, as if this is a run, he's going to be in charge of guarding in that area and making sure no one gets past him in that area. However, if you take a look, the second there's a handoff, he ends up crashing way too far in. He does exactly what Landon 
Collins didn't do in that play I showed you earlier, where he is not patient on this play. He tries to run in as soon as possible, and it's not going to be very easy for him to get blocked out of the way. This now means that his initial gap assignment is completely open and allows the Cowboys to pick up a big run against them. Collins absolutely will be a very big benefit to this Redskins team. I mean, I don't know if spending that big amount of money on a player is going to really benefit them too much since they are already kind of stuck against the cap a little bit, but I do think that he can help them a lot. There's a lot of people that are saying that a box safety is an outdated position, but in my opinion, that's just crazy talk. I mean, you see teams running more and more nickel and even dime packages, and it would benefit you a ton to have a guy who can both play a linebacker position and a defensive back position. That's what Landon Collins can do. He can play defensive back and he can be a linebacker depending on which play you want to have him in. So for example, if a team comes out in a pretty standard one halfback, one tight end, three wide receiver set, and if they then have a formation that appears to be a running formation, they can simply just send Landon Collins into the box. And if they don't have a running formation, if they have four wide or five wide, then you can simply just send Landon Collins out. It's no real struggle. He's a guy that makes things very easy for defensive coordinators, and I'm sure he's a guy that the Redskins will love to have.